right, this is case number 20441 the people of the state of Michigan versus Terry Angelica uh, Gray, defendant is charged with one count of assault, aggravated one count of malicious destruction of property. Today is a day set for pre-trial conference appearances, please. For the record, Your Honor, Christina Ritter on behalf of the people. Janice Stevenson appearing on behalf of Ms. Terry Gray. Ms. Gray, ma'am, please unmute and tell the judge your full name. My name is Terry Angelica Gray. Thank you. Today is the day set for pre-trial conference. Ms. Stevenson, how are we proceeding? On behalf of Ms. Gray, we would move for dismissal for the complainant's failure to appear, Your Honor. Ms. Ritter. Judge, this is the first schedule of the pre-trial conference. I'm going to respectfully request the court adjourn this pre-trial conference and give the complainant witness one more opportunity to appear. And this is the first scheduling of the pre-trial conference. The court is going to deny defense counsel's motion for dismissal. Grant the people's request for one-time adjournment, giving them an opportunity to notify the complaining witness of the obligation that they appear before the court. I am going to set. The adjourned pre-trial conference. For June 6th, at 8.36, the complaining witness is required to appear. Failure of the complaining witness to appear will most likely result in the matter being dismissed unless the people have a valid explanation as to why the complainant has failed to appear. Bond will continue with no contact with the complaining witness. Anything further? No, thank you, Judge. Nothing on behalf of Ms. Gray. Thank you, Your Honor. I mean, what's the problem? What's the problem, Ms. Gray? No problem. This is my second time um, appearing before this court. Um, yeah, this you had an arraignment, and, and then you have a pre-trial. This is the second time she has a show, Your Honor. She wasn't required to appear at the arraignment, uh, Ms. Gray. They told me that she was required March 14th when I, um, the first court date that I had, that she didn't appear, that she was supposed to appear, that she was notified. Ms. Stevenson. But why does um, it look so angry, though? I mean, why, why are you trying to I'm, Okay, I'm but it's not have to be understand. angry. Just, just inform us. There's no need to be angry. You're breathing hard and every day. I need you to I'm take under, oh, uh, Listen uh, to me. Listen to me. I just want you to take a deep breath. Now you are informing us of something. We're going yes, to look into it. We yes, are going to look into it. Ms. Stevenson, Ms. Ritter, can you all look into what the defendant is saying? Um, yes, Your Honor. I'm going to, yes. If, do we want to just have her go back to break? No, out? I want to look at it now. Let's, can we look at it? She said March something. They were here. March 14th. Okay. Ms. I don't Ritter. Have March 14th, Judge. Let me look at my other notepad. I apologize, Your Honor. No problem. I don't, I don't have a March 14th, Judge. As any, Mr. Flanagan, can you tell me when the last time this case, was, well, I, it doesn't, according to how it reads on the docket, it wasn't on my docket, but can you tell me what the last court date was for this um, gray case? Hey, that's your honor. The last court date was- It's in a notepad. I'm missing a notepad. It says here January 20th? That, that was the day I was released. Yeah, and it says February the date of your arraignment. Can you just hold on and let us look into it? What yes, did you me. say, Mr. Flanagan? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the pretrial was scheduled for February 28th at 8.30. At that time, it was adjourned to today at 8.30, for Your Honor. That's what the ROA indicates. All right. February the 28th? Yes, ma'am. That was the day that cases were adjourned to today, Your Honor. So the cases were not heard that day. Okay. So the cases were adjourned because, what, I was in trial or something, maybe? Um, yeah. Okay. So, all right. So no cases were heard that day. I adjourned the case to today. Yeah, I didn't see, I didn't see, I, I, I do agree with you. I didn't see a judge that day, but I talked to the attorney. And right, they told and they told you that. They don't know. They don't they know if she came or not because we didn't oh, hear the, any cases. That's what, they, that's, that's what they told me, Your Honor. Okay, well, they don't know. They Maybe at the time that they said that, maybe the person didn't come. However, it didn't matter if they came or not because I adjourned all the cases. So now today is the date that was set for the pretrial conference and the complaining witness has not appeared. I am going to adjourn the case to June 6th. The complaining witness is required to appear. Failure of the complaining witness to appear will most likely result in the matter being dismissed unless the people have a valid explanation as to why the complaining witness could not appear. Okay, can, can, I, can I ask you one question, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am, one more question. Uh, is, is, is my uh, my evidence I turned over um, during the time she filed this complaint, uh, what, is, is my evidence um, uh, on the record? There's no evidence on the record. I, this is just I, a pre listen listen to what I'm saying. I turned over. Listen to what I'm saying. Yes, ma'am. There's no evidence on the record. Today is the pretrial conference. Whatever evidence you may have, you, need, you can give it to your lawyer 
and they will, okay. if, the, if the matter proceeds, then they will turn the evidence over to the prosecutor. Right now, we're just at a okay. pre-trial conference, okay? Okay, I'll do All that. Right. Then Thank I'll come so on June 6th. And then that time, if I say the same thing, then you can say, no, Judge, last time you said if they didn't come, you was going to dismiss it, okay? Correct. Okay. okay. All right. Then you're all set. You have a great day. Yeah. Okay. I, I know. Thank That's you so right. And it's new to me trying to explain it, too. That's new. See, y'all, I did something Thank new today. I'm, I'm pointing that out to Miss Stevenson now. I did something new today. All right. Yeah, have a great day. You have a great day, and you stay safe, Miss Gray, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. You so you're welcome. All right. Okay. Then when we when we don't finish the docket until 3 30, this is what's gonna happen. Okay. This is what I'm just gonna keep doing this too. I'm gonna keep doing it. We're gonna finish at four o'clock from the morning docket. Okay. So let all the questions be answered and everything. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready on um Hatcher. Let's see how many questions they have. They won't have any finish. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm gonna see if it's a good job. Good job. Okay. We're gonna answer all everybody's questions. I'm gonna just be like, oh, you have another question? Okay. All right. This is <laughs> Miss Jordan, I mean, you still walking around at 1025? Well, I'm at work now. I'm at work. Not, okay, well, then go to work. Because what you can't do is go to work and court at the same time. So you stay at work. <sighs> All right. Those who I just brought in the courtroom, turn on your cameras, please. Mr. Coley, Mr. Houston, I'm going to send you all to breakout room. Um, a little bit late for court. Mr. Houston, Mr. Houston. You, you feeling like that's what we want to see you putting on book bags and stuff. All right, listen, we are at court. Welcome. Welcome to 36 District Court. It's 1026. I'm Judge Lanise Bryant, and we've been at court since 830 this morning. I'm Judge Lanise Bryant. You're at court. I'm not going to compete with whatever you else you're doing today. If you didn't get up this morning to come to court, please continue doing whatever else you're doing. Because we're in court, and we're ready for court. And we don't want to see you walking around in the grocery store, walking around shopping, walking around at your We don't. That's not what we came here to do. If that's what you came here to do, then you need to log off. I'm not going to compete with whatever else you, you decided to do this morning. I promise you, I'm going to delete you from my courtroom. You must remain stationary in an upright position ready to attend court. Please accept to join the breakout rooms and please wait in the breakout room until someone comes in to speak with you. Please wait in the breakout room until someone comes in to speak with you. This is case number... Two zero four five one zero two zero one. The people of the state of Michigan versus Portia Renee Allen. The defendant is charged with two counts of child abuse. Fourth degree. Today is the date set for a pretrial conference appearances, please. For the record, Johnny Christina Renee, on behalf of the people. Your Honor, Malika Span, D eight six five eight six. For defendant Portia Allen. Miss Allen, can you state your name for the record, please? Yes, Portia Allen. Your full name. Your full name. name. Portia Renee Allen. Today. Today's the date. For a pretrial conference, Ms. Fan, how are we proceeding? Your Honor, we would like to proceed by requesting a final pretrial conference and discovery with a not guilty plea. Court is going to continue a not guilty plea on behalf of Ms. Allen. Set the matter for final pretrial conference, July 13th at 9 o'clock a.m. Discovery should be submitted to the defense by June the 13th. Bond will continue. And what's the current contact provision? What What is the nature of the relationship with the children? Your Honor, she has the children back. This case is from 2019, 2020. Um, she was detained for another um, complaint, and and this matter was just brought forward. She wasn't sure why there had not it had not been brought up when the children were not in her custody. However, she has been back and has had them back since 2020. Miss Ritter, how old are your witnesses? So back in 2019, Your Honor, um, they were 12 and 10. So. Fourteen and sixteen, around fourteen and sixteen now. What did the magistrate say at the arraignment with respect to contact? So, Your Honor, I was trying to look up the hallway, but it looks like the thirty-sixth district site is down for maintenance, so I'm not sure. Mr. Flanagan, can you tell me what the what the bond conditions are? That's right. I'm going to Just no contact, and it states the uh, victim's names. So let me say something. I want to be clear about what I say. So in, in essence, Ms. Allen has been in violation of the court's bond conditions since the date of her arraignment with the magistrates. 
it would have been appropriate at that time for someone to bring to the attention of the magistrate that she had had custody of the children and, and allow the magistrate to determine whether they were still going to allow her to have contact with the children. When the court gives an order, it is the court's order. It is the court's order and it is to be followed to the letter and to the T. So Ms. Allen has currently been in violation of the magistrate's bond condition by retaining custody, care, custody, and control of these children when the magistrate said no contact. I would just like to say that the state gave her children. Miss Van, I don't give a, I could care less. I don't, you was about to make me say something wrong. I don't care who, who in charge of the court. I don't care nothing about what the state said. I'm talking about from the date of her arraignment, when the magistrate who does not answer nor respond, nor have any um, uh, requirement to consult the state, when the magistrate said that Miss Allen was to have no contact with her children, then it was the responsibility of whatever lawyer was representing Miss Allen, if they didn't do so, because they may have done so, and the magistrate still could have said no contact with the complaining witnesses. So let me be clear about this. Whatever my order is, I don't care what the state says. I don't care what CPS says. I don't care what anybody else says except a court that is higher than me. So when the court gives an order, unless an appeals court overturns that order, Miss Allen, you are going to follow that order or it is not going to work out for you. I am going to amend the no contact provision despite the fact that since the date of her arraignment, Miss Allen has been in violation of her bond condition. I am going to amend the no contact provision to a no assault of contact. I want Miss Ritter to contact her witnesses and find out if they have a problem with that amendment. The second part of my order is that if I find out that Miss Allen has in any way, shape or form discussed this matter, these charges and the incident with those complaining witnesses, I am going to revoke that bond. I'm going to change that condition and the children are going to be removed from their home until this case is resolved. Miss Allen is to have no conversation whatsoever with the two complaining witnesses regarding these charges. Please understand again, Child Protective Services has no bearing on these proceedings. This is not a family court proceeding. This is a criminal court proceeding. Everything I say is what is is what goes. There is no one that can override me unless this decision is appealed to the Wayne County Third Circuit Court. I hope that I am making myself clear. Ms. Ritter, um, do you have the contact information for your complaint witnesses? Judge, I don't have a phone number for the complaining witnesses. So well, you I'm... may need to send your OIC out to the home. Okay. Anything thank further? You no, Your Honor. Not from the people that thank you. All right, then we are all set until July the 13th at 9 o'clock a.m. Have a great day and stay safe. Your client continues, despite this being the fourth time that I've lowered her hand, she continues to raise her hand. I will send her to a breakout room so that she can speak to you personally, Um, since I don't know why she kept raising her hand when I kept lowering her hand. I don't understand that. Okay. So she'll be her breakout room, breakout room number. Um, I don't see that. Oh, there she, she returned to a breakout room. All right. Ready on span. This is case number two zero um six zero four eight three zero one. The people of the state of Michigan versus Constance Span. The defendant is charged with one count of license plate illegal use. Oops. Uh, one count of driving while license suspended, revoked or denied. Today is the date set for review. Appear appearances, please. Spanish Stevenson appearing on behalf of Miss Constance Span. Miss Span, ma'am, please tell the judge your full name. Constance Span. Um, do you have a middle name? Yes, Ruth Amory. Thank you. You got three middle names? Yeah. I can't talk because so does my daughter. <laughs> oh, no, my daughter has two middle names. Well, Ruth Ann is like one name. Is that right? The first Amory one is. Yeah, the first one is one whole name, and the second one is a name by itself. <laughs> That's a lot of names. Your, your people, everybody wanted to name you. That's what happened. Let me tell you something. Everybody wanted to name you, and they said, this is going to be her name. Okay. <laughs> That's all right, Ms. Ann. And then I used to tell people, 
my kids have too many names for you to get them a nickname. So just for, you need to pick one of these names and call them by one of these names. All right. Today is the day set for review. Um, oh, wait, I'm sorry. And Miss um, Spam was placed on probation for nine months last September. So I think this is her, this will be her nine months. Oh no, June will be nine months. Yeah, June will be nine months. But she still owes $755 and she has a warrant in Rose Point. She also, I don't, the way this reads, I'm not sure she has other tickets in 36 because she doesn't say that she does, but um, she at least has 755 on this and the warrant in Rose Point. This, I mean, this Thank you, Your Honor. So the Rose Point warrant got taken care of this morning and it's been closed. Okay. Um, she, she does have tickets in 36 report, which she's working on. And she's asking um, at least until May to be able to pay the $700 and um, get those tickets taken care of also. Okay, so does she, Mrs. Flanagan, is there already a, a final review in the system for her? Oh, shit. Uh, the discharge from probation is on June 14th. Is that a good day for me to see? June 14th? Yes, ma'am. I'm just taking a minute time. How many days do they play baseball at home? All right, well, June 14th is a Tigers game. Plus, we're in a jury trial. Let's move her to um, June 15th at 1.30. Okay. And then um, if she's set, then that'll be her discharge date, June 15th. At 1 30. Okay, anything further? Nothing on behalf of Miss Fan. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, Miss Fan, you're all set. Have a great day. Stay safe. You too. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. So, do we have the um, case information from Miss Ryan? Yes, yes, we do. Thank you. All right, go ahead. Okay, Case number 200 454 0801, State of Michigan versus Unique Chantel Lyons. The defendant is charged with count two, count one child abuse, fourth degree, count two, assault or assault and battery. Defendant is a walk in. Appearances. May it please the court, Darnell Barton, PA3363, on behalf of the people. And for the record, your honor, Dennis Stevenson, appearing on behalf of Ms. Unique Lyons. Ms. Lyons, please unmute and tell the court your name. Unique Lyons. All right, Ms. Stevenson. Thank you, your honor. At this time, we um, would like to address bond. All right. Thank you. Having conferred with the people, your honor, we would ask that the court's no contact condition be modified to allow. I'll put on lip gloss uh, or whatever we go on. To allow. Go ahead. Uh, to allow Ms. Lyons to return to the location of the incident. Judge, I'm gonna to have to um, get that exact address. Uh, we would have, having conferred with the people, Your Honor, we are, we're asking that Ms. Lyons be allowed to return to the location of the offense, which at this time I represent as an officer of the court is an unoccupied dwelling. No one lives there, which is uh, why Ms. Lyons would like to return to that home to make sure that it um, is safeguarded. Mr. Barton? Yes, Your Honor, that is correct. I've spoken with um, Stevenson about this case and the person that I've spoken to is not at that location. So people have no all right so the, the court will grant the motion and modify the bond to discontinue the no contact with that location thank you very much your honor <laughs> anything further nothing, from the PBO. nothing on behalf of miss lyons we thank you your honor All right. you're welcome thank you miss lyons have a good day thank you you too <laughs> So, Mr. Murad, you you all want me to call Ms. Anthony Thomas's case? You you're muted. Yes, Your Honor, please. Mr. Murad, do you realize that it is 11:43 and Ms. Thomas's case was scheduled for 8:30 this morning? Your Honor, I would apologize to the court um, for any tardiness. I believe this is Ms. Thomas's first Zoom appearance in this courtroom. I'm not making an excuse. I just want the court to know. I ask the court to give her one chance, Your Honor, uh, to hear her out and maybe give her another date at least. It is her first pretrial conference. I mean, it's the, it could be your first time ever. It could be your first time ever in your life hearing about court. But certainly, if you got a notice that said at 8.30, you don't come at 11.30. I'm not going to hear her today. I understand. Um, I, she can be, I'll reschedule her, but I'm not going to hear her today. I understand, Your Honor. Um, I also do understand that uh, there's, I'm not sure if there's a complaining witness present today. I would ask that upon her being wouldn't care. I wouldn't care if it wasn't. If the court mm -hmm. required the I'll, I'll reschedule her, but I'm not hearing her today. You can't come at 11.30 and your case was at 8.30. I completely understand that. I will reschedule the case.
through November the 24th. Can that be at 835, Your Honor? Yes, it's at 835. Thank you. All right. 835, Ms. Thomas, not 1130. Anything further? Nothing, thank you so much. I lost that. All right, have a good day.